Uh, my name is uh, Moshe Manor. I am a reserve colonel from the Israeli Air Force, and I am expert in air defense and missile defense systems in IAI. So, Mr. Manor, thank you for uh, for having us uh, here in uh, in Bulgaria this time, locally. First. Let me ask you about the offerings uh, that we have in the... We brought uh, to Hermos uh, the last version of the multi-system, multi-mission radar. It's the state-of-the-art uh, technology of radar that actually need to defend against advanced challenges like cruise missiles, UEVs and ballistic targets. So this is the state-of-the-art technology, the last radar, and it's the backbone of the Israeli defense systems. Uh, not everybody knows about the multi-mission radar term and terminology. Can you please explain us for the general audience what that uh, radar system can do actually on the on the field? Uh, in the, uh, the last history, actually, we have separated radar for air surveillance, for the ground control unit, for uh, controlling the airspace. And then we have special radar for air defense systems like SA-6 or SA-8 or other systems. And we have special radars for missile defense systems. But the boundaries between these mis missions is faded in the last couple of years. So we can find that both systems can defend against missiles, air defense, again, air breathing target, and to make an air surveillance mission. So actually, we utilize all the capabilities in a single platform, a single radar, and we call it multi-mission radar. So if you want a single system to do everything, we actually need to use the state-of-the-art technology like ASA radar, it means that the radar can steering the beams both in horizontal and vertical. So we talked already about the multi-mission uh, radar system. It's quite compact, actually. You can see here a mock-up. Of course, it's not the real size, but um, in the um, in the playing field, actually, it's quite compact, quite quite uh, portable. What kind of an advantage does it give um, in regard to the competition that's on offer on the market? Because there are many multi-mission riders uh, out there nowadays. Uh, the main challenge for a uh, radar or system today is how you defend the systems because the survivability of the sensor are actually affected by the weapons of the enemy. They have uh, precise guidance ammunition and then they can easily spot the radar and hit it. So the radar should be very uh, fast mobile capabilities so you can redeploy it from one place to another very very fast and you need to operate the radar with low probability of interception it means that actually we try to avoid any uh, extra ammunition of the radar so we will active passive sensor in beside of the radar and then we not expose the radar to other uh, enemies spotting ISR systems and one of the main advantages of this radar it's very compact so actually in less than 15 minutes you can uh, redeploy the radar from one side to another side and it's uh, improved the survivability of the radar. The second issue is the redundance of the radar. The radar is uh, inherently have a lot of redundancy so even if part of the radar will be hidden the less part of the radar can still be operated obviously uh, in degraded mode but you still have some capabilities of the sensors. You spoke about redundancy in, in regard to network operation, how many radars can you um, use in an array, for example, if uh, you buy multiple systems, can they be redundant by themselves? And uh, how many could you deploy in, in the battlefield if it's uh, quite large in, uh, in regard to uh, area of uh, coverage? Uh, actually, it's unlimited number of radar. Um, but if you are using a sensor network, actually you can connect all the radar and then you can coordinate between the, the beams, you can manage the beam of the radar, you can manage the, the load of the radar, you can transfer mission between one radar to another, some hand checks between radar, and then you can improve dramatically the accuracy uh, of the, the target uh, position, and then you can support more uh, air defense system in more accurate time, you have much higher update rate. So actually you can connect all the radar in single network, and the network will manage all the radar, all the missions of the radar, all the beams of the radar, and they can uh, back up each other. And if you have some, uh, uh, let's say one of the radar is under attack, you can just switch it off and all the radar will cover immediately the same area by optimizing the beam to this direction. How easy is to operate that kind of radar in terms of uh, command and control and uh, most of all training? So. 
how long would it take uh, to train the people who will operate the system in the future because that would that's going to be part of any future uh, contract for the long term uh, usage of these radar systems uh, modern radar actually are uh, pretty easy to learn how to operate it because the system makes all the logic uh, automatically so it's not uh, supposed to be a long term to train new soldiers to operate the radar uh, the, the crew, the radar crew to deploy it is between three to five people, that's all, including all the technicians and the, the operators. So it's not supposed to take a long time uh, to implement uh, this type of radar to a new field. In regard to software and uh, firmware, how often uh, do you make uh, and provide updates uh, in regard to current radar technology? Because we know that nowadays the technology is uh, moving forward quite fast. Uh, the the multi-mission radar is ongoing uh, program in uh, IAI, so actually we have a lot of customers in the world uh, in, and in Israel that actually operate the radar. So each and every time that we have a new uh, knowledge or after each and every conflict we have, uh, we ana analyze all the information and then we upgrade the software. For example, in the last couple of years we realized that uh, the ballistic target are uh, more highly saturated uh, uh, salvos, so we need to find a solution how to discriminate between close target, etc. So we update the versions of the radar, uh, we update the software of the radar uh, each and every year, several times a year. And of course Israel is um, constantly in one of the hot, hottest zones in the world, so these uh, upgrades and updates are uh, quite important for you. but. Given nowadays, um, in international terms, we have new conflicts spanning out all across the globe, but especially here in Europe for the first time in, uh, in many years. How important is the radar technology uh, according to what you see in, in the field? And um, has it proven that the future of combat is actually different than uh, what many countries were expecting? Uh, unfortunately, you are correct. Uh, we, in Israel, we have a lot of experience in all type of conflict between uh, low intensity conflict and limited war uh, and full uh, scale war. Uh, I think that uh, the most challenges uh, threats today for air surveillance and air defense are the cruise missiles and the low and slow target like UAVs. Uh, we saw it in uh, Saudi Arabia, we saw it in Iran, we saw it uh, in the conflict in the uh, uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and we saw it in Ukraine. Uh, and I think this is the trend. We will see more and more UAVs, more and more uh, long-range cruise missiles and we need to defend against this type of tri uh, threats. I think that we, in the next uh, years, we will see more swarm of UAVs it means that the UAVs will fly coordinately and it will challenge their defense and their surveillance system. And we will find more and more cruise missiles that will attack an accurate uh, target, high value target in very long range. So this is type of threat that we need to defeat and we need to find a solution both in the sensor and the effectors. So actually we are presenting here in the booth uh, the, the radar, the sensors, as well as the effector, the, uh, the Barak, a mix that it's a multi-mission effector because it's air defense and missile defense effector. And you can see that uh, the, the uh, faded between mission is not only in the sensor, it's in the effectors. We use the same effectors for air defense and missile defense. Uh, if you see uh, a fighter that carry a ballistic missile, uh, so at the beginning it's air defense mission, but after he dropped the, the missile, it's a missile defense mission. So actually we use uh, multi-mission sensors, multi-mission effectors. So you actually answered partially my uh, next question. It was what was the, what is like, at the moment the perfect package for air defense? Gonna be radar and um, effector system, but also the um, offensive part, which is the drones that uh, IAI is also offering, the UAVs on offer like the Heron, for example. I think that the, the total package should, the, the first line should code uh, multi-mission radar. Multi-mission radar, it's not a luxury anymore, it's a necessity, it's a precondition to dominate the, the airspace. And then you need uh, some defense systems. Uh, I think one of the uniqueness of the multi-mission radar of ELTA is that we can support any type of effectors. So you can decide to purchase a multi-mission radar now and later on to decide which type of uh, interceptor 
it's actually it works for you for your needs the second thing is uh, how to collect information about the uh, enemies uh, the UEVs we have uh, a very wide diversity of UEVs in II start with the Heron it's a very big one but we have a middle size and a small size uh, both ISR and attacker UEVs it's part of the package of any Air Force today Bulgaria is now in the second stage of uh, the process of acquiring uh, radar systems. ELTA is one of the major players um, on the market, and of course you'll be participating. RFP is about to be uh, to be issued. What's going to be on offer uh, for the Bulgarian uh, uh, air defense? Uh, we're offering to the Bulgarian uh, Air Force the last version of the multi-mission radar. It's the multi-sensor multi-mission radar. It includes all the package of uh, passive and active detection on a single platform. And of course, we are offering all the operational experience and uh, technology transfer. We uh, initiate part of the production here in Bulgaria with local uh, industry. So actually, we are not looking for a customer, we are looking for a partners. How advanced, how advanced are you in those uh, kind of negotiations, looking for partners uh, in Bulgaria about this um, industrial partnership and also transfer of technology? Uh, myself, I'm coming from the operational side, so I'm not familiar with the industry. We have export here that actually this is the main focus, how to find the partnership in uh, Bulgaria and how to cooperate with the local industries. So, uh, my name is Orna Shemesh. I'm coming from Israel Aerospace Industries, the largest uh, defense industry in Israel. And uh, my uh, specialty in the last uh, decades is the marketing of uh, UAVs in Europe. That's the right person to, to talk about uh, UAVs today. Uh, Ms. Shemesh, uh, thank you for having us here at your booth in, um, in Plovdiv at Hamus 22. UAVs are kind of the hype um, not on the market, but in, in the general public and public opinion uh, um, at the moment because of the crisis, because of the escalation that we see um, here in Europe for the past many years, there hasn't been a, a conflict. That's why it's interesting to speak about them. Where you see now uh, the drones, ha has the perception, not just in the general public, but uh, on the other hand, in your clients changed after the, the, the escalation of, of, of the most recent conflict, but in the past few years, what is your opinion? I think yes, I think at the beginning it was, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting point, at the beginning it was uh, something more uh, relevant for specializing military air force uh, uh, units, and uh, nowadays I think even the, the public itself understand the power of using unmanned uh, robots to do some uh, uh, what we call dirty and dull jobs of uh, using uh, the UEVs in all sizes, in all shapes, in all the families that you can have, meaning that this kind of between the smallest to the largest, between the half kilo to the 5.7 ton platform, they all contribute to the safety of the people that are behind. I mean, we save lives but doing still the jobs of uh, intelligence, surveillance, uh, sometimes target, uh, targeting uh, uh, important targets that otherwise have to, we have to risk our pilots or other soldiers in order to, uh, to give this information. And this is uh, becoming more and more important for the people all around the world. You actually did a quite good overview of the roles that uh, unmanned air vehicles are uh, used uh, nowadays. But um, let, let me just clarify the terminology because we said robots, drones and unmanned vehicles. Are they robots uh, in themselves? Do they use and how much, if, if so, do they use artificial intelligence or they still need uh, the, the human head to control them from the ground? Both answers are right. Meaning, first you need to have automatic as much as possible system. Why? Because you want everything to be as fast as possible and as accurate as possible. Uh, unfortunately, the computers are becoming more and more efficient than human beings long time ago. 
and that is uh, the this is the benefit of using a, a I would say remote robotic systems together with artificial artificial intelligence that is giving us a huge benefit. On the other hand, you always want to have a man in the loop. You don't you want to avoid mistakes. You want to uh, reach your target. Uh, but still in the way that uh, is authorized by the authorities to do that. And this is important to keep men all the time in the loop. So UAVs are actually just an important part of a whole system, meaning uh, you have the unmanned vehicle, but you need the command and control system as well. You need radar, you need uh, air defense system, early warning systems, jamming systems, if so, or anti-jamming because uh, they're using certain signals. What is the actual role of the vehicle itself? Is it the primary or um, kind of a different one? The whole purpose of the vehicle is not to be the primary, is to carry the sensors, the things that can perform the mission. Uh, meaning if you want to have day-night observation, if you want to have uh, intelligence of uh, SIGINT, if you want to have any kind of uh, information, that is coming in real time. This is the power of the, of, the, of the remote piloted aircraft system, that in real time you can gather all this massive information, transmit it from up there in the, in the, on the platform, on the, from the sensors on the platform, transmit it in, in uh, communication, either line of sight or satellite communication, and you receive it on ground. And more than that, I can say to you that today we made a, a huge uh, step further. We not only have it on the ground in the control station, but we distribute it to all the command centers. And now in the headquarter, the commander can see in real time what is happening uh, in the field and take the right decision and instruct and command the right uh, decisions. So communications is uh, a really important part in uh, both in terms of um, speech control but also networking. Uh, how difficult it is on the present day battlefield to have clear communication in between the, all the networked assets uh, that, that you have on the field because as we see in uh, hot conflicts at the moment even using satellites, GPS, or various other uh, positioning system is proving to be quite difficult because of because of jamming. How you tackle that problem? Because it's especially important for uh, for the UAV community. So communication-wise, we would like to make it secure as possible. Uh, GPS-wise, we would like to have it uh, secure with other means that we have as as much as possible, of course, and. Uh, and the rest of the innovation uh, will let for the future to tell us. We have to keep something for the future. You said future. Do you think that um, unmanned vehicles are the future? Actually, not just on the battlefield and in defense terms, but we see more and more um, fields in, uh, in the commercial uh, business as well that are trying and actually not just trying, but already uh, empowering um, unmanned vehicles uh, in the field. I will say that uh, UVs are now the uh, history because uh, II is the pioneer of UVs for the last, uh, I will say, uh, more than four decades, almost five. Uh, it's the present for sure because you see the increased uh, demand for that and the increased use of that. And I'm sure that the future will be even uh, higher, higher use of that. You said IAI is one of the um, uh, of the pioneers, but also currently one of the global leaders in that respect. Can you do us a brief uh, overview of the products that are on offer that are produced by IAI in that field? Sure, I think I'm proud to say that IAI is a manufacturer and developer of systems like uh, from the mini UAVs up until to the uh, Heron TP, which is uh, five more than five ton per platform. So you can imagine how much it can carry. And I think this is a huge proud for, uh, for uh, Israeli uh, aerospace industries to lead this market for such a long time and always to be on the cutting edge because you always, always have to be uh, moving on with technology. And I think our engineering, although they are suffering from uh, uh, maybe uh, lower salaries in the respect to their high tech, 
industry, which is blooming nowadays. But I think they are very satisfied with interesting job that they are doing uh, at II, and uh, this is something I'm very proud of. But that is also high tech. Yes, exactly. But uh, I mean, you know what is the high tech uh, issue now? We are missing uh, a lot of uh, of um, programmers in general all over the world. What about the chip problem and uh, the problem with? Um chip component supplies, uh, do, do you have any impact in IAI and especially the, uh, the drone division? I will not go to this because this is not my line of expertise. As marketing, I'm not on the operational side, but uh, I'm, I'm guessing that people are finding a way whenever needed uh, the solutions needed in order to overcome this. Until now, I didn't see any customer not to receive because of one chip of another, but I'm not an expert about that. What is the current dynamic on the market? Have you seen a spike in demand uh, for UAVs or at, le or at least uh, interest in the, the past even months or, or weeks? And uh, where, um, what is your assessment of the global market at the moment? I would say that I see uh, more interest all over, not only from the conflict uh, coming uh, inside Europe after a long time of... Uh, calmness. Uh, I think that this interest still needs to be translated into budgets and programs. So that yet has to be seen. What are the major markets uh, for you and for the unmanned systems that AI is producing? I will say that the main markets today are uh, maritime surveillance, in which AI is uh, definitely a leader with the Maritime Heron. Uh, we are doing a great job surveillance uh, of wide area of maritime seas and uh, both for military and for civilian markets about that police i mean coast guards etc i will say that also tactical systems for armies uh, and of course our our forte is the air force that is uh, benefiting from multiple sensors that we have in use on uh, our male category. Male is, stands for medium altitude long endurance uh, systems. Do you see a potential market in Bulgaria for that kind of systems? Coming to Bulgaria is, uh, first it's not my first time in Bulgaria. Um, and uh, yes, this is, uh, this is something I thought I received in fact from Bulgaria that there is a need. And I was asked, and I was very happy to come here and to, uh, uh, and it's not the first time, as I said, in order to present our capabilities. And I'm sure that uh, we can advance in uh, this uh, path for the benefit of, uh, of the Bulga Bulgarian armed forces. I guess the product portfolio much resembles uh, the one when uh, you buy a fighter aircraft, for example, because you get a whole system. It's not just uh, the vehicle itself, but it's the whole system for, for control, training and, and so on. If uh, there's going to be a package, I guess it would include all of that. A full package includes uh, training and uh, the system itself and also the capability to maintain it. at. at and certain level that the customer is demanding and uh, not the customer support after because AI is a, is a company that is, is uh, ensuring ongoing support for the long term. And to wrap it up, um, the present conflict actually proved that um, many UAVs are actually expandable. Uh, does that mean that you're going to change or adapt the production process to the realities on the field that uh, that uh, we're seeing a lot of uavs have been have been lost uh, in battle uh, does that mean that uh, production needs to be ramped up so much more are available on the market or they rather gonna be more robust what's your opinion i think you cannot avoid the fact that uh, the main reason that we invent that uh, people invented uh, uvs is to avoid uh, the loss of a uh, manned aircraft. So in this respect, I will say that the main change that I see is that we will have the industries dealing with UAVs, we will have to expedite the delivery time in order to uh, not as business as usual when it takes uh, uh, months and years, but to shorten it up.
that's that's my personal conclusion.